Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another session as part of the Babler Vision Pack series. I am Abhinav Banerjee from Babler, and I'll be your host for today's session. So during the course of the sessions in this series so far, we have heard from experts and understood ways to expand in a child's formative years, their physical development, their emotional and social development. And with the last session, we ventured into ways of expanding cognitive development by means of the incredibly powerful method of storytelling. In this session, we discuss at length yet another equally potent method of expanding cognitive development, which is that of flashcards. So flashcards is what we're going to be talking about in today's session. That's our topic for today. So as many of you may well know, flashcards are immensely popular all over the world. Uh, if you've seen shows like the Ellen Show or any other show where they occasionally bring in, you know, child prodigies or geniuses, uh, you may have seen that flashcards is what they use to test or to demonstrate their prowess. You know, map cards for geography, uh, number cards for mathematics, spelling cards, and so on and so forth. Now, that is not to say that this method does not have its critics. Uh, there are uh, some that say flashcards tend to overburden a child bombard them with information or that they tend to take the context out of learning. Yeah. On the other hand, a country like Singapore uh, swears by it. It is known for promoting what they call the Heguru method of uh, right brain training, which is the side of the brain that's responsible for processing large amounts of information and with high speed. Now, whether or not these are valid concerns or effective methods, uh, we will address during the course of the session today. But there are, in fact, uh, more concerns. So for one, to be able to make use of flashcards, you need to procure a large number of them. Yeah, And a single flashcard pack would have how many, what, 100, 150, 200 at most? That is not nearly enough of a vocabulary base to convey much. So then you need to purchase multiple sets, then, then that becomes an economic decision. Also, there's the question of what to cover, in what sequence, and how many repetitions to do for effective absorption and assimilation. So long story short, flashcards are very popular, but they tend to divide people. Uh, people tend to have divided opinions on them, on their effectiveness, and the fact that there's not nearly enough clarity and possibly several myths around them makes for quite a discussion. So today we will try to get close to finding answers to as many of them as possible and also bust some of those myths along the way. Um, my guest today is someone you've been seeing on the other side of the table during the previous sessions, Vidya Joshi, who happens to be in charge of content and research and uh, is indeed one of the brains behind Babler. The real reason she is qualified to talk about flashcards today, though, is because some years ago, she decided to try them herself at home. Uh, in fact, if some of you parents follow our Babler blogs, you may want to read this very interesting and insightful blog post written by her called A Mother's Diary, Raising a Smart Child and the Lessons Learned, where she tells her story. Um, it was a book called How to Multiply Your Baby's Intelligence by American psychologist Glenn Doman, which first set her off uh, along this path. She then trained and researched extensively in early years learning, knowledge and experience that would come in handy while designing the algorithm for Babler many years later. She prepared a formidable number and variety of flashcards, uh, among other education materials, uh, before her daughter was born and used them with her over the next many years. So there are actually very few who would be as qualified and be able to testify as to the effectiveness of flashcards as Vidyut. So welcome to you, Vidyut. Thank you for moving sides across the table <laughs> to be able to share all your learnings and expertise with us today. Yeah, hi, Abhinav. Uh, that's a long introduction about me. Well, and as you said, uh, turning sides, yes, it feels a bit uh, different being on the other side, as you call it. Yeah. But uh, I just would like to say something. You said so much about uh, what I have done and all that. It's just I would like to add a little bit to this. This is, uh, you know, it's the learning of the journey that I um, tread on. Basically, it is the 
uh, it's the entire journey of all the parents who have contributed towards it so uh, parents before me and i have interacted with you know been on several forums and all that so it's the learning from all those uh, wonderful parents and a lot of researchers and a, a whole bunch of people who have contributed to this whole thing and uh, early learning you know it's like uh, just like science is like it belongs to uh, mankind just like that early uh, learning belongs mm. to parent kind i would say absolutely so thank you again for being here and uh, i think parents together can empower their tribe and and more power to all of you uh, of course. so uh, i think let's let's get down to it then um yeah. as always we shall take up questions towards the end so you can put your questions as and when they come up and uh, when we are ready to take them up towards the end of the session uh, we hope to be able to address all of them then so um vidyut i want to begin by asking you uh, the term flashcards itself you know uh, the most basic of questions when we say it it perhaps conjures a different image in the minds of different people so if we are to try converge our collective understanding so we all think of the same thing when we hear flashcards uh, what would you say they are basically what constitutes a usable effective basic flashcard so a flashcard is basically a card bearing information and which is intended to be used as a learning aid so this is the very rudimentary definition of uh, flashcards and because these flashcards are modular they can be you know arranged as you want it and this brings a lot of uh, flexibility so mm-hmm. you can think of them like you know lego blocks so you use different uh, you know these little pieces of legos which you um, you know connect to create one object that is the way lego blocks work but flashcards on the other hand they are fungible so what i mean by fungible is that you know they are fluid in nature and and uh, they can be molded as needed so they are not like you know a particular set uh, in a particular set structure like uh, lego blocks you can use them in the way that you want and that is why you know you can use it to facilitate different kinds of learnings okay so uh, now in the context of uh, well actually flashcards are used uh, by very many people of all ages so if uh, we want to talk about flashcards mm, in the context of young children what they are normally used for building general awareness language logic awareness things like that and what do they have they have uh, pictures they would have words numbers you yourself said uh, some of them yeah. there's a, there would be a combination of numbers even you know rhyming can uh, rhyming pairs can be introduced alphabets mm. phonics and just about everything that can be learned can be done through flash cards and moreover uh, flash cards can be like sort of single sided you can have it double sided and even there is this concept of three sided uh, flash cards those are only digital of course mm-hmm. so uh, you know there are different reasonings um, behind the use of these flash cards but the fact remains that these flash cards have been a learning learning tool from almost the 19th century so definitely there has got to be a power in that absolutely so been around for two centuries and counting there there's got to be for sure some merit to it but uh, like we started by saying that there uh, there do exist divided opinions around mm-hmm. around their use right so yeah. could you uh, tell us you know once and for all whether or not <laughs> they should be used and if yes if there is any weight to what the critics have to say against their use Yes so there is always this never ending debate on not only flash cards on any kinds of learnings basically mm-hmm. so so in this debate i would say uh, whether they should be used or not used my position is definitely they should be used now having said that so i would say they should be used as long as there is conviction in the parent's mind that it can help my child and second uh this these the flash cards should be used as a play which means there has to be an element of fun and a social experience for the child both these have to be there then then use them 
so now you know you talked about uh, some uh, right brain development and uh, scientific uh, you know bombarding them children with a lot of flash cards and stuff like that so mm-hmm. these are uh, maybe they are uh, quasi scientific concepts i would say right brain development why because they have not been proven by science so let's talk about the mainstream science which which you know uh, comes from research and from tier 1 institutes like harvard so they say that flash cards can definitely support some some fundamental early development efforts so let's talk about this science so now there are two points i would like to make here the science says that uh, language logic and general awareness these are all the inputs that uh, are required for young children so in fact the more the inputs that you give the merrier it is and why so because these inputs are helping to build neural pathways in the brain so whether the child is actually retaining what you're showing in these uh, flash cards it doesn't matter hmm. what is important it's great because you are helping the child to develop their uh, the capacity of their brain for future learning okay that's the first point and the second point is okay most children will definitely retain whatever is being shown to them so if nothing else uh, that becomes the foundation of their uh, future learning isn't it and as uh, you know children are uh, statistical learners so they don't need uh, to be shown things in an order or sequence they just observe from random patterns and they learn from it hmm. okay so 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 you know in fact i would like to share something like uh, maybe you are a movie buff yourself so you probably have seen this movie called uh, slum dog uh, millionaire mm-hmm. i'm sure many of our parents also may have seen it so that movie is an interesting movie i would like to draw your attention to one particular element in it you know this uh, there is a passive knowledge retention there happening what that means is it's something that you know but you don't know that you know and it comes out at the right time so when the en- environment is conducive it comes out at that right time and that is exactly what is happening to this uh, our hero in that movie and mm. this is this is how flash cards this is how it works okay and mm. you know if you imagine uh, uh, the the little child who has got such a powerful developing brain what can be achieved with that brain it's 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 immense so everything around uh, you know whatever uh, whatever they see little babies see all these are possible bits of information that they are just lapping up and the speed is amazing and they have to they you know kind of uh, have the ability to draw inferences from these things around them and why they have to because it is actually believe it or not it is a survival skill they have to be ready for the world so they are actually babies are cognizing uh new causal relationships from every bit of sample data that is why they are logical and that is why they learn fast so now what why am i telling you this so it's basically th- th- this is what flash cards are doing internally for babies they are helping them to problem solve so which is uh, if you think about it it's a much greater ability which is developing and you know it will reveal itself one fine day as the ability to learn this is the crux of using flash cards mm. the crux of it so as i understand it is that uh show cards actually help form those associations and help them draw inferences and uh, to be able to enable timely retrieval of information as and when required so it's it's not as as uh, one may fear about encouraging rote learning or plain yes. memorization yeah correct it's, it's, correct absolutely on a subconscious subliminal level it's actually correct. helping develop correct. bigger patterns uh, right. going forward right so the idea is not to like you no know, learn this thing learn this learn this learn this that's not the idea the, what mm. is happening in your brain the capacity to learn is increasing that is the idea behind it right that's that's great um this uh something interesting that i i learned uh, recently and i was wondering if you were aware of this there's this book out there apparently called einstein mm-hmm. never used flash cards did you know about this <laughs> oh yes uh, ask me about it <laughs> okay and yeah. and it's uh, apparently it's popular it's a best seller 
and the moment you yeah, put yeah. Uh, einstein's name on it suddenly you know it, it it becomes serious and people take it a lot more yeah. seriously so Absolutely. how how does one counter that and and the argument that it posits that flash cards overburden babies yeah yeah so this is a very interesting question and this book is also rather interesting i have not read the book completely but i i found you know it has a very provocative title probably i guess it's uh, more intended as a marketing technique so i'm mm. not sh- uh, so i would say i'm not sure you know if there is documentary uh, doc- documented history whether einstein used flash cards or anything else but mm. what we know about einstein we do know about his childhood his mo- his mother uh, has uh, you know shared a lot of things about him so let's talk a bit about einstein's childhood now mm. einstein's father actually he worked for a company which uh, you know manufactured um, electrical e- equipment uh it, he was a supplier for october fest which is a huge thing many many of you may be aware of it so he would uh, you know uh, einstein would actually spend hours together reading these technical periodicals and magazines which were coming to his father's company when he was a little kid okay well before the age of 9 and he would in fact eagerly wait for these periodicals to lay his be the first one to lay his hands on it so all this well while he was doing it it was being recorded in his memory much like flash cards i i believe and his parents his uh, mother father uncle and people around him they gave him a very conducive uh, environment which in which you know kind of triggered or his curiosity they triggered it with books uh, toys arts you name it anything of interest and you'll be surprised einstein had a very uh, short attention span so his mother took that upon herself to improve the attention span and she very succeeded in uh, succeeded in it a bit with difficulty i would say uh, you know she uh, had him play the violin and mm-hmm. so his attention span increased and very many of his amazing discoveries have happened while he was playing the violin so it's very important to have that conducive environment also so it's uh, einstein was definitely a part of several uh, discussions that happened um, on their dinner table technical discussions and all that was silently being taken in so anyway back to the book uh, this was about uh, uh, einstein this is the known fact about einstein's childhood so you decide whether he used flash cards or not i would leave it entirely up to you now if you think about the book i do agree with the author in saying that uh, the objective of the flash cards is not is de- is definitely not to you know a 5 year old should rattle out whole huge amounts of memorized information definitely that's not the idea the idea is to as i said before it's to develop the brain cap- capacity and at the right age that is important so when i say the capacity of the brain i mean in all dimensions okay so it uh, it may be critical reasoning problem solving creativity all these are future skills which the parents have to focus on so therefore i would say flash cards supplemented with other things is what is a holistic development and in fact in our babler curriculum we have hundreds of these activities outside flash cards which are play based sensory experiences they involve a lot of critical reasoning creativity so these are important for the child you know so if you argument um, if let's say if your argument here in in the book as a rote learning tool definitely i am not for it we should not use it as a rote learning tool tool but if the argument here is that the parents should not be opportunistic about the 0 to 3 uh, year developmental window then i definitely disagree and moreover if you think about this debate we are having this debate has anybody asked a baby a baby he will amaze you by saying that you know i mean why are you having this i'm not uh, complaining i love it so there is this uh, while i was i came across uh, a wonderful researcher uh, by the name of uh, 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 laura schlutz i listened to her ted talk and very amazing ted talk i urge you all to listen to her she talks about how these little babies learn huh? how their mind works they are like little scientific mind she calls it 
So mm-hmm. how they learn, and mm-hmm. she's done a lot of experiments to sh- put forward her points. Hmm. Okay. So it sounds like they have perhaps made use of an unproven or unconfirmed fact, and then sort of spun it into a catchy, marketable title, which may not yeah. uh, necessarily be true. In yeah. fact, uh, like you mentioned, the the scientific journals and the magazines that he consumed right. uh, as a child, they served essentially as uh, flashcards yeah. for him. So Absolutely. they served the same purpose, and and look where that got him. So right. Yeah, yeah. Huh. So all right. So that's uh, that's comforting, I would say, and and <laughs> certainly brings yeah. us in in favor of flashcards. But if done right and with the right intent. Right. like not with the yeah, purpose exactly. of making them memorize or rote learn everything right. so but uh, so if we are to correct, go down correct. that route down the flashcard route uh, what kinds uh, should mm-hmm. we be using and showing and and what age do we start from then so uh, as i said before flashcards are used at various ages so let us focus on the cards that are relevant to this age group okay mm-hmm. so uh, you know there are newborn flashcards Now, newborn flashcards are like for little babies who are just born. They are called as infant simulation cards. <clears throat> so, what happens is little babies cannot see color as well as you and me do. Mm-hmm. They are they can see only in contrasting colors, mostly black and white, and a little of red when they uh, grow a little uh, a few more days. Mm-hmm. So, so what uh, uh, these uh, infant um, pla- sim- stimulation uh, cards do? is they provide you know different kinds of patterns in these contrasting colors we have provided a set in our first year babbler box for newborns so uh, what they do are you thinking that these patterns should be learned by babies definitely not <laughs> so uh, the, you don't learn the patterns they are just helping the baby is vision to be stimulated you know so uh, not only the vision but it helps babies to focus and gain attention later on it becomes like visual tracking is one of the abilities that uh, the babies is, are developing so these flash cards enable these things uh, to develop then uh, uh, there are quantity uh, uh, cards you know quantity cards are uh, basically babies have this wonderful ability the ability to subtize so what does that mean subtize meaning it's to it's the ability to it's like estimation it's the ability to uh, guess how many things are there a random quantity that is there guess how many there are and what happens it is this this ability you and me had this ability when we were babies but it dwindled over time okay so like for instance if uh, if we go into a room full of people a small room we can probably guess okay there would be around maximum up to 20 we would be able to guess but if we go into an auditorium and if you have to guess you can't unless you count them okay mm-hmm. but babies can do this mm-hmm. so so it's the only problem is they cannot tell us they can do so quantity cards help develop the skills further mm-hmm. some of our babbler parents may have seen these cards like we are showing red dots like this tak 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 so these dots are um, quantity cards which are you know we are building up on these quantity cards uh, later they become into numeral cards that numbers you know and for the even equations mm-hmm. so the logic behind uh, so uh, sorry so babies can actually work out the logic behind uh, these things so when you're showing them all this even equations if you show them like 2 plus 2 equals 4 it's not that you are telling them to learn that when you show them so many numbers of equations they figure out the logic they figure out the grammar after all it's grammar just like how they figure out a language grammar they figure out this math grammar as well okay so think about it language cards uh, people are aware like you know the uh, the spoken word is being um, talked about all the time so there would be a picture and a word shown to them so that that is like a this is a bottle okay so when they when you show the picture of a bottle and when you show the word bottle that association happens hmm? so those are language cards so even they graduate into for the uh, sentence cards okay then um, there are these uh, like everything that you see around you let's call them as general awareness cards so information about the environment all this is can be shown like you can take take it from the known what you see to the unknown 
okay so mm-hmm. that uh, those are what i'm calling as the general awareness cards hmm? so there are these kind of cards and for the you know uh, maybe some people you know, they are a part of language only let's say alphabet alphabet cards phonic cards things like this so all of them essentially fit into these brackets which i just now uh, highlight and now when you ask at what age well i would say from birth because there are these starting from newborn cards and till what age well i would say forever so why forever because if you think about it, this entire world around you is like a flash card system don't we all learn from it all the time okay so so that is in my mind you know it's it's the view how you look at flash cards and how you learn from it it's very important to have that thinking in your mind mm mm-hmm. yeah so uh, what i'm hearing from from what you describe is that uh, show cards need to start from uh, a certain level and progressively get more complex as uh, we go along so are parents expected to fully plan that uh, sequence and curate the the sequential sequentially evolving set of flash cards um well i would say see it's it's not like they have to there is no need for doing this you can show cards randomly that is definitely important but if you add an element of evolution to this it helps babies to work out all sorts of things around it very important to do that so in fact that's our thinking in babler so when we uh, have flash cards they are not just flash cards we are calling them as show cards and our show cards there is a babler algorithm which evolves hmm? the learning evolves in that algorithm what i would like to do abhinav here is i would just like to show how our algorithm works the the show cards algorithm works okay uh, okay sure. i would like to share a few slides if that's sure. okay sure sure so uh, so i'm calling it like the learning evolution so how babler uses it hmm? let's have a look at it um now we look at it in three brackets uh, so i'm talking the, about this only in our show cards you know the flash cards as you're looking referring to it now i'm not talking about the other numerous activities that are there in babler let's be clear about that mm-hmm. so so we have bracketed in, it into these three categories so you have language math and logic and knowledge of the world so now if you think about how learning evolves how does one learn language so first there are words then there are two words that you learn then there are sentences and then these sentences become into books that's how the language evolution happens what happens in the case of math you first uh, understand quantity that evolves into you know numerals that evolves further into equations and there is concepts concepts is like the logic concepts are built that's how logic math and logic evolve now the general awareness or the knowledge of the world if we talk about first you know all these little things that you see around you objects then you learn information about those objects hmm? we are calling them as info bytes so this is the uh, this is the map of uh, the language evolution of, of the learning evolution i would say and then let's look at each one in a bit more detail so language let's look at the words so what happens is all these words that are shown to you baby boy read grass black hair ears so many words ears jump all these you know uh, you show them as uh, are shown to the uh, in our curriculum and then these words now look at the word pairs so baby boy baby girl black hair drink milk big ears jump up read book are you understanding so first these words were introduced then these two words are introduced together so think about what's happening in the mind they that connection is being formed now okay then you go on to our sentences so baby girl then they have been introduced to small as a word then the baby girl is small okay so this is a sentence that is a theme and mm-hmm. uh, there may be a next one baby girl sleeps big bed okay then they see the they see the whole sentence they have seen these the ones that i'm showing you in black these are shown as you know they let's call it as active learning okay so active learning is what you're seeing in black that's been explicitly shown to them 
and passive is what is happening in your mind you know in, in the baby's mind it's it's happening whether you like it or not it just happens you're learning so things sentences like this so a huge number of sentences like this are shown cow green grass they know about it the cow is eating green grass okay uh elephant big ears so there are sentences like this then these sentences become into books so what i mean by books is all the logical oh uh, yeah can you see my screen i think uh, i can. can see my screen yeah okay i can yeah yeah so baby girl and baby boy on green grass baby girl and baby boy have black hair they uh, baby be a girl baby boy read a book so these sentences all of them like you know they are connected in some way or the other mm -hmm. that becomes into a book mm -hmm. okay so, the, so this is the evolution of learning that i'm talking about and how we are doing it now i'll tell you about the word cards so we have you have the uh, word baby and a picture okay like this this is not necessarily how the babeler algorithm is showing it it's just in my powerpoint presentation mm -hmm. uh okay so book milk okay green grass black reed whatever then we show word pairs so big elephant mm -hmm. uh, what's this okay now you can see but i think mm -hmm. big elephant baby girl read book big ear so these are the pairs it's got a, a uh, you know this association forms further mm -hmm. then then you have sentences the elephant is drinking orange juice the baby girl is so small drink milk sleep well you know there is an element of fun also in these pictures that are being shown now this is one of our sample books that i'm showing you here so this is some pages of this book see all these sentences which i've been showing you and how they have formed are now into a book mm -hmm. okay so that is how language is being learned then math that what we do is we introduce uh quantity cards you know so these 100 cards are introduced to them like this mm -hmm. then evolves it evolves into numerals so numerals 1 2 3 actually the numerals are shown and then the baby is left to draw this connection between 20 uh, the numeral and 20 the dot card okay so this connection happens automatically so that is the numerals then equations again now you you now i, I hope you're understanding what i'm trying to say so mm -hmm. when i'm saying the equation now the dot cards have been shown okay so you show 1 plus 3 equals 4 you are not making them learn it you're just showing this okay so when you're showing this uh i think there are people in the i have admitted everybody right yeah mm -hmm. so so when when you're showing this Uh, this learning is happening hmm? again here i would like to point out the ones in orange are the passive learning that has happened the active has already we've been showing all these cards okay mm -hmm. so this so see how equations help then we uh, have concepts logic concepts mm -hmm. so logic concepts like say uh, uh, 3d shapes in color so there's a set of cards a set okay that is shown so okay these are 3d the, the 2d shapes in color Hmm. then maybe 3d shapes i'm just giving you a few examples so some shapes like this would be shown as a set taller and shorter concept then uh, who is where so you know like a spatial concept things like this so so imagine this concepts are being uh, shown to you hmm. and numerous concepts like this so there would be patterns sorting ordinal numbers fractions graphs area perimeter numerous concepts like this okay so that was the math and logic part of it then let's talk about the general awareness or the knowledge of the world you know i'm sure many of our babeler parents are able to now make the connection what i'm talking about so now let's talk about objects so objects like all things that you see around you so you all all kinds of cat violin dog strawberry chimpanzee all these are shown then there is information about each of these objects that you have been seeing what is that we are calling it as info bite so now you've seen a dog okay the dog is commonly known as a man's best friend then dogs are the only domesticated carnivores mind you we have taken great effort to make sure there is a rich vocabulary even in these info bites very important and fantastic facts about each of these objects are there 
believe me you all will you will enjoy reading these info bites uh, so dogs pant with their tongues out to keep themselves cool so this is these are what we're calling as the info bite cards and when we talk about object cards we show them as a set so what that is like okay a dog fine then there are more dogs shown there are different breeds like a german shepherd a cocker spaniel a dalmatian a bulldog a labrador a chihuahua maybe a doberman a fox terrier a saint bernard so all so many kinds of categories this is just one example i'm giving you so uh, what i want yeah okay so what i want to say is you know this evolution of cards which is happening it's like think of it why am i showing you this it's like you know uh, how aladdin's genie you know he morphed into so many things that uh, uh, you, you remember the the animation movie right so where that genie would take up various different shapes and become almost anything that's mm. exactly what these flash cards are doing so this was the you know kind of uh, learning evolution which uh, i wanted to uh, highlight hmm that that's a pretty uh, cool analogy actually i mean that uh, you have the genie and like the flash cards in the form <laughs> of a genie at your disposal and uh, it takes various forms and it's for you to use as you would use it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, also yeah that was uh, quite insightful i think in that it helped really put the entire learning process into perspective how we start small with you know the most basic irreducible uh, sort of units uh, in terms of number and word cards and then move progressively uh, to being able right. to grasp complex concepts and equations and read text lead in books uh, right. so so that's that's pretty interesting to see uh, the whole journey of it um, so you uh, made a distinction between um, active learning and passive learning right in that uh, the active learning has already uh, been established i mean uh, it's already been etched in the mm-hmm. mind and then the passive learning just hap- it, you know uh, comes up supplementarily to it and yes. then yes. that sort of makes for consolidated learning right. but I-, i would assume that for that to happen for the active learning to firmly be etched in the mind uh, mm-hmm. there is uh, there does need to be a certain number of uh, repetitions yeah and i ask this because this is an oft uh, asked question by our babler parents too in that um, how many repetitions are called for really and how many right. do we need uh, do we need so many uh, so could you throw some light on that yes uh, you know abhinav i cannot stress on how important repeating is it's the most important thing you know your baby must see these cards at least 20 to 30 times maybe the simple ones can be picked up in uh, lesser repetitions maybe 10 but it is absolutely essential to repeat them and i would kind of caution parents against being biased so uh, you know when you you when you're using flash cards remember that it's not about you it's about your baby and your baby is will reflect what you are feeling within so if you are feeling joy baby feels it if you are feeling boredom then baby will feel it if you feel it's boring to repeat then your baby is going to feel that too so that's why i i'm saying that repetition is absolutely essential your attitude is even more essential and there's another concept that i would like to say here there is a space to rep- repetition that should happen you know this concept of space repetition was actually introduced by a german scientist by the name of uh, leitner okay and uh, leitner he wrote a wonderful book about the psychological uh, uh, psychology of learning it's called so so lent man lernen it's in german it means how to learn to learn See, very interesting so this book actually he devised a leitner system of flash cards which uh, accelerated and increased learning by the spaced repetition so coming back to repetition as i said uh, you know Uh, it's absolutely essential again i would like to highlight the fact that children are uh, statistical learners so here again i would like to share one uh, slide if i may so as i was saying children are statistical learners so how do they learn it's through repetition 
distribution and cross situational now what does that mean so repetition means you increase the frequency okay distribution means the you know word to object co occurrence has to be there hmm? word and object co occurrences have to be introduced and cross uh, situational meaning whatever you are introducing that has to be mapped with other things now i have taken the example of a word but this applies to every bit of learning that we are talking about hmm. okay so now for example for example if you say increase frequency uh, so the like this is a spoon these are spoons that is a spoon keep using that so when you are talking about the uh, word to object co occurrences so hold the spoon in your hand put the spoon into your food your spoon has fallen down and when you say cross uh, situational meaning the spoon in a different context like a teaspoon silver spoon spoon in the mouth so this is what is meant by you know statistical learning and that see how important is repetition for that you have to do that and uh, um, as i said again you know please 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 let the attitude of the parent to this repetition is very important so uh, i cannot stress on how important it is so if if a if a parent feels bored bo it is boring then your child is also definitely going to be bored by it so you have to understand this fact that the child's mind is actually building up for its its sample space from these repetitions it's learning from it so how can you deny him this fact of learning then remember the connections that are to be formed in the brain will not happen these connections will not be made and they will not be useful in fact i would like to do a Uh, a a very simple experiment with our parents can we do that okay yeah, yeah yeah so we'll do this little experiment so parents uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to share uh, some cards with you okay so all of you please pay attention okay so so dinosaurs this is one of our sets that we have so i'm going to share this with you so let's see some dinosaurs ready 1 mm -hmm. 2 3 tyrannosaurus rex stegosaurus triceratops allosaurus velociraptor iguanodon hadrosaurus ankylosaurus pterodactyl kentrosaurus stop okay mm. i've shown you this card now i request you all to recollect them okay and now i am going to sh share another tool with you all and you have to put in the names that you all rec uh, recollected in this box okay mm -hmm. so the question there is how many times how many dinosaurs did you recollect mm -hmm. type in the ones that you did okay and what you type in is going to appear here on the screen so i urge parents come on uh, start typing you can do it only once so the, how many dinosaurs type in their names please oh great so honestly okay. none somebody okay. is saying velociraptor okay great not even one sorry oh come on so somebody has type uh, stegosaurus that's it okay 2 3 2 3 2 3 2 3 okay Number nine, ten, Ankylosaurus. Okay, fine. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay, great. So, uh, that's that's very nice. So, I just wanted to prove this point. See, I have sh I showed it to you just once, and what is the recollection? Hardly. And I'm, I'm sure, uh, out of the ten, maybe two at the most. Hmm. so that is my point exactly so repetition is a very very essential uh, <clears throat> uh, uh especially for babies it's very essential so don't deprive your child of it just because you feel it is boring okay right yeah right so yes i think that's that's one thing to uh, to take away and to remember that repetition cannot be wished away so <laughs> yeah. uh, it's it's uh, undeniably important but uh, then uh, even then uh, how do we sort of assess uh, how many cards does one show how how do we know how much is too much and how little is too little right so uh, <clears throat> actually there is no standard number as such you know mm. you must show that many 
so mm-hmm. i would say you do as much as you can afford mm-hmm. in terms of money as well as uh, you know in the in terms of the child is willing to do and child is willing to accept so if you think about english as a language you know to to speak english fluently you would need probably a vocabulary of maybe 1000 words so to speak it even as an uh, maybe as an expert speaker you would probably need to have a vocabulary of probably uh, 2000 words whereas mm-hmm. you know a language like uh, japanese or chinese there are there are just it has something like 80000 characters okay so even to speak chinese properly properly you need to have that many characters you need to learn that many characters mm-hmm. so quantity of information is not the burden to the mind it is about your own resourcefulness so mm-hmm. i would say do what is comfortable uh, with uh, for both of you the parent and the child we have provided almost 6000 flash cards and our algorithm presents it to you so you don't have to feel the burden of it it's all taken care of maybe while you're doing it manually you might feel so but that won't happen through babbler i'm sure many of our parents who are using it might uh, realize this what i'm saying hmm a slight segue uh, but uh, you know in keeping with that note of not overburdening the child also i think uh, one thing to remember is that the mind is uh, pretty much elastic so it will mm-hmm. you know take in as mm-hmm. much as you know so one should not have any preconceived notions or a bias Absolutely. as to you know Sorry. how much are we burdening it but staying with that note of uh, not overburdening the child what would your thoughts be on on testing Yeah. you know uh because this is again something that that uh, is divisive and that should we is is it right to be testing the knowledge of that young a child and uh-huh. but uh, yeah. if not then how do we know our methods are effective what what would be the right way correct. to go about it correct correct so uh, so the theory uh, that we is basically you should never test a child what what this means is you must never ask a question with the intent to find out whether your child has picked up something or not that's that's really bad that's that's what i mean by testing never do that mm. so what is good about it is if your child knows something the child will share it with you I- immediately mm. have to keep prodding mm. he will come out with it so it, it's okay to you know ask the child to express it or articulated uh, the understanding that they have as a part of probably a different activity hmm? Hmm. Hmm. and you can appreciate the child there there's nothing wrong in that that is not called as testing that is a very natural way of uh, doing it it yeah. may be a bit challenging to you know may have the subtle difference am i testing or am i asking it naturally it hmm. will come to you eventually but just remember the basic principle that never 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 put your child in a spot never then mm. that's where the learning ends never do that so so uh, you know testing well i i won't say you can do away with testing because eventually the testing happens when they go into the real world anyway so right. why do you want to do it at that age correct never do that correct the universe is going to take care of the <laughs> testing we do not need to add to the burden there so, absolutely right right uh so i, I yeah i think that's that's uh that's all yeah uh, pretty telling and uh, another question that we get asked uh, very often is um, digital or physical flash cards um, which which of the two is is uh, preferable or uh, more effective uh, what would your thoughts be on that yes um now this is a very important question in my mind so the answer to it is you know uh only the parent can decide what is good for the baby hmm. okay so having said that when i say that i would urge the parent to take this decision based on a bit of clean understanding first so i would like to put forward two views so from the child's point of view what is it that the child is getting from a flash card so it is a visual accompanied with the voice of a, a loving caregiver uh and the activity is done in a playful manner okay mm-hmm. so which out of these three is dependent upon the medium hmm? the visual is dependent upon the medium right mm-hmm. now between paper and the screen what is the difference in that it's basically the texture of it let's say huh? so like the visual 
uh, how how uh, how should it be is the background clean in the sense it's not cluttered so if you're trying to show it something like for example um, you're showing uh, allosaurus so allosaurus it's a clean image clean background only the allosaurus so that's the only object that the child is seeing so are they are they the images clean are they high resolution images hmm? very important to understand that so these things are the ones that would decide the uh, success of a flash card the visual texture so so for example also the size so is it better to show it on a big screen on a big tv screen than on a small piece of paper of course i would say on a big screen is definitely better mm. is it better to show it on a on a tablet with some with a with nice clean high resolution good colors rather than a not so nice image on a on a on on a piece of paper you know so this is what it it is from the child's point of view everything else if you keep it the same it doesn't make so much of a difference from the child's point of view mm. okay so so are you are you actually what you need to think about is what decides the media is are you showing the required uh, right quantity are you showing at the it at the right time are you giving it the right amount of repetitions are you showing it in the right sequence so this is more important one should be look at this rather than fret about the medium you know uh, so now let's take it uh, 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 we actually uh, uh, spoke to a lot many uh, parents about this when we were designing the uh, babler algorithm and we took into account so many problems when we designed this algorithm so it is like a solution it's a one go solution that we've provided so what happens it becomes absolutely effortless because and that is a motivation for doing it every day so if as a parent you were doing it think about you know storing those cards uh you know keeping them uh, safe then organizing it do i remember what i did okay i have to show i showed this on friday do i remember now okay on monday what am i going to show are we following the discipline or is it a bit boring so so this algorithm it takes away this mundane thing from your uh, kitty it's like you just have it now just do it so it becomes effortless then it this algorithm moves according to your baby's needs Hmm? Mm. you can make it faster or slower whatever depending upon where your baby is positioned mm. and it has got fantastic images clean high uh, resolution images babies love them adults love them the parents have given us so much feedback about it and mm. lastly it's like very flexible you can show it on tablets you can show it on a laptop you can show it on a tv screen of course not on the mobile screen तो आपको पता भी नहीं चलेगा कितने कार्ड्स आपने दिखा दिए यू वुड बी शोइंग मोर देन 30 40 कार्ड्स पर डे now naturally okay when i'm saying this there would definitely be one question that would come in the parents mind and you know that is like is the screen time good for my baby hmm. now although this is true when we are talking about screen time please understand there's a big hullabaloo made about screen time but screen time is when 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 uh, doctors or anybody else researchers talk about screen time it's the dead screen time that you're talking about dead screen time meaning if you're looking at a tv screen is what we are calling as a dead screen time where everything is done by the screen nothing is done by the babies or by anybody who is viewing it for that matter so digital cards with the parents voice as the stimulant that in my mind is a very effective tool and in this fast advancing uh, uh, digital world i think we have to be a part of it we cannot but be a part of it and that is the and in fact you will be surprised many toy standard companies you know who set the standards for toys they have left it to the parents discretion now okay mm. so uh, and think about it in this pandemic what did we learn i think digital to the if if there was no digital world we wouldn't have any world at all then mm. so i urge you to you know think about this and there is a wonderful blog written by one of uh, our colleagues sachin uh, the digital dilemma it's there on our website uh, he talked about you know screen time minimum measured and meaningful very beautiful blog i uh, urge you all to read it all right so yeah the uh, for all of our parents in fact the babler blogs are uh, quite a useful resource so you may want to check occasionally from time to time so this very blog on screen time then uh, 
uh, with Yutson, like I mentioned at the start of the sh- session, where uh, she talks about her experience of using, creating all of this, uh, these education materials and flashcards. So um, to kind of close loop on, uh, you know, the note we started on, uh, we started with sort of the right brain, left brain segregation, uh, right? So uh, is there any logic to that? Uh, to the development of either or both in the flashcard context? Does it help augment both or uh, what would be your thoughts around that? Um, yeah, so like, as I said, there is no, uh, you know, scientific evidence about this. It's mostly you know, practice and science. That's the difference, I, I would say. So none of it is actually scientifically proven. But mm-hmm. And there are a lot of theories around these things, you know. Uh, if you uh, flash so many cards, it's great and things like that. So there is one thing, however, that I feel, you know, uh, subtizing is something that uh, really works. Subtizing is like, you remember the estimation. So the number of cards, the quantity cards that you're showing, that is subtizing. But that works very well. Now, having said that, now the right uh, brain, you know, what it functions, actively functions uh, when we are uh, imagining or dreaming. Okay, so that is called as an image brain. It creates kind of mental images from information that is received. And you you might be aware that there are some people who have strong photographic memories. They are able to recall a lot of information. They can actually see pages of books and, you know, it's like a snapshot. So there is this school of thought that feels that flashing a huge number of cards helps the right brain development. Now, again, as I said, it is not scientifically proven. Hmm. But... Uh, it's up to the it's for the parent to decide in fact in our algorithm we have provided this facility that you can increase the number of cards if you so wish to mm-hmm. okay and in fact in our last vision pack uh, session with surekha ma'am the storytelling session that we had she talked about how the right brain and the left brain are you know through storytelling how both of them come together and that's exactly what we have done in our babler activities we believe that our activities together help this harmony in left and right brain development mm-hmm. okay so that's how i would look at it okay so of course babler parents who are already using uh, show cards you know for them the pro- the whole process uh, the related hassles of putting together content and uh, planning the whole evolution of it is eliminated uh, but for other parents, what what quick wins would you uh, leave them with? Yes. Uh, what so can that, they take yeah, actually, it's the more the key to this is, as I said, first of all, don't, don't let your boredom seep into the child's mind. This is the most important. Parents' attitude is very important. And when I say parents should do, they should do a routine with the child in a disciplined manner. Do it every single day. So first of all, have these flashcards ready. And I would say you can you can buy them. You don't necessarily. I mean, I'm not saying that use Babler all the time. You can buy them. You can make your own power PowerPoint slides. You can do whatever you want. But you know, you have to do it. This is the most important thing. So you have to be ready with them uh, and show it every single day. What should you cover? I think that learning evolutions, uh, which I went through, that is what you need to cover. And the, uh, the most important, important thing is to have a routine. So say you set aside time every single day. Okay, I'm going to do it in this time frame. Uh, have a conducive environment to it. Remove all disturbances from that environment and just go ahead and do it. That is all. So if, if you do it every single day, I promise you, your child would benefit immensely from it. There will never be a time when they feel it is bored. Never. Keep at it and show it every single day. You can read the cues of the child. You know, there are some of our parents who have told us these things. Oh, so, you know, my child was not uh, looking at it uh, before and now they have started looking at it. Why did that happen? Because the parent persisted in it and the parent did it. So it's very important for the parent to take uh, uh, the, uh, take charge of this and do it in a, in a very disciplined manner and following a routine. In fact, we did a workshop uh, last week with some of our parents and we asked them, you know, to think of a week where they are doing 100 flashcards, maybe five storybooks, one new experience activity, maybe five conversations, some five music and art uh, kind of uh, activity, one logic item, something like that. So we gave them this and asked them to plan their child's week. And uh, I would say parents enjoyed this very much, but they felt it was very cumbersome. Okay, I can do it now, but I mean, if I have to do this week after week, that becomes very cumbersome. 
that was the sharing that they had so uh, so this babler has this algorithm which does this all for you and it's uh, it it would be great if you all if the there are babler parents here maybe if there are non babler parents they can actually connect with our um, customer support and you know uh, go through a counseling session that would help them immensely understand what it is okay so discipline uh, pays off and uh, yeah uh flashcards is a tool that you get as good as you give uh yeah. you stay with it stick with it on a daily basis and it will reward you immensely yeah. uh, over the long yeah. run i i think yeah. we are we are uh, ready to take questions now so i i see one from swati gaur she says my baby shows interest on a hard copy of flashcards and asks me to show more what if he asks me to show more on tv i want my baby to show more interest on books instead of tv so this is something you uh, did speak about earlier screen yes, time yes i i did exactly yeah, yeah. yeah so that's what uh, your baby is so hard copy of flash cards yes so that's great so if you're sh- showing hard copies now mm-hmm. why uh, you know a book when you're reading a book that is mm-hmm. also uh, like a flash card you know you take the book see mm-hmm. when you're showing maybe it's a story book okay mm-hmm. so the story book if you're taking there is a in our last uh, surekha ma'am whom i refer to there mm-hmm. is a session uh, we had so you can find it on, on our site so there's a uh, a story time session with her so how you can interest your child in the book so mm-hmm. this is a great unconnected with the flash cards i would say so it's more how to interest the child in uh, a book and things like that so mm-hmm. tv i would say be away from the tv Um, uh, because as i said it's the dead screen time so if your child is interested in hard copy flash cards great i i would say go on keep increasing the number that would be fantastic go ahead and eventually introduce books also to the child like that i'm sure your child will be interested in the books too hmm uh we have bharti jain who uh, asks about her 2 year old son uh whenever she shows him flash cards he always wants it in his hand and hold it uh what to do then now this is one thing uh there can be a difference in opinion here but if you ask me for my opinion when i was doing it with my child i i showed her both physical cards as well as digital cards all of them so mm-hmm. i made it uh, where, you know if the if the child wants to see it a closer look definitely most welcome let the child see it but teach the child to respect it there has to be a respect for that thing it is not a play thing you cannot use it like take it and bang 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 or do something no that is not how it's to be treated it has to be treated with respect and that respect should be inculcated by the parent itself so this is something which is going to be used as a tool so let the child have it, no problem at all the child will feel happy holding it in fact even our uh, the banner shows a little child holding a flash card so mm-hmm. of course it is something it's their belonging so they they would like to have it so let them have it and use it uh, but respect that thing so it is okay to have it but be very careful with uh, uh, treating it i would mm-hmm. say that mm-hmm. the cypria who's who's asked uh, uh, you know how fast do we uh, should we show uh, flash cards some places some sources on the internet ask for um, them to be shown very fast but as babler advises a uh, minute break or you know a steady pacing yeah so babler doesn't advise a one minute break between <laughs> cards it is uh, it is a one minute break between the categories of cards okay like i showed you uh, you know the language cards then the quantity cards so you they take a one minute break before the new category begins that's what uh, babler has said but mm-hmm. you must show it in that one sitting the that one set of like the like, the word cards you you have to show it in that one set so mm-hmm. so don't take a break there and uh, you, you uh, as i said you go that speed of the uh, uh, speed is dependent completely upon the child's attention span and you're doing okay mm-hmm. so be sure to uh, say the word correctly you have to pronounce the word uh, properly clearly and that the, that the child has heard it that's very important and uh, go to the next one and the next one and just stop and leave the child asking for more mm-hmm. that's how it should be but don't take a break of 1 minute and then uh, uh, do the next card no the category types should be a 1 minute break that's what we meant by it 
Mm-hmm. It's good somebody pointed that out. So let's. I hope that's clear enough. Mm-hmm. A question from Shruti Madhukiran who asks: Can we mix different varieties, flowers, animals, fruits, or flashcards in one session? We okay. kind of uh, is kind of what happens in during in the Babel show cards too. You know, the first time you're showing these cards, let's say for example, you're showing fruits. Show all the fruits. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Then maybe the second card. I don't know what she said. Maybe the flowers. She's showing all the flowers. Mm-hmm. Okay, show all that. Mm-hmm. Then. once that is done you can if they are uh, you want to mix them up feel free to mix them up but mm-hmm. that initial categorization that input should be given first mm-hmm. and then feel free to mix them up shuffle them up that that's fine you can do that kanika sethi asked what size of flash cards is good so to this i have to say we haven't uh, come across any scientific guidance on the size of flash card so far uh, what we have seen are the best practices based on common sense so the first best practice is for small babies the bigger the better obviously so if the hard copy uh, card has text on it then the text should be around i would say 5 to 6 inches in height now if there is an image then it may be a4 or bigger now having said that it is best to experiment and try out options with your baby in this context of in the context of physical cards um uh, in the case of screens you may not show a screen that is less than 10 inches the height of the letters i would say should be at least about 40% of the screen so please note that these are common sensical rules that people have made as they you know based on experiences so we do not prescribe any size and we suggest that parents make their own decisions the next question uh, was from sami gada as you said there has to be repetition for 20 to 30 times how does it differentiate from rote learning if we follow that amount of repetition so sami the merit of this argument is not in how but in the why of this question so rote is less meaningful because the purpose is to remember and uh, because the purpose is to remember and memorize so if flash cards are intended to help a child memorize they will definitely not be meaningful but if in the flash cards the repetition is to make the child to understand the concept and apply it then it becomes meaningful that is why uh, in our babla curriculum the flash cards what we have we call them show cards they are complemented with several other activities which complete the loop we have lots of other activities including you know sensory play which provide uh, a different dimension for the learnings that you have gained from flash cards so like for example let me tell you if if in our cards we have shown them a set of musical instruments then what we would do is in one of our activities we would have them listen to sounds made by these instruments maybe in another activity we recommend that parents take their children out to concerts talk about music talk about musicians you know so on then there would be another activity where parents are recommended to uh, sing rhymes we have even provided some unplugged nursery rhymes for them to sing along okay so this is in the context of how babler does it now another important thing to understand is that repetition is how we all have learned how humans learn actually practice is what makes perfect so think about it could sachin tendulkar have been who he is if he had learned only the mechanics of hitting the uh, uh, hitting the ball and just use the bat once or twice do you think not really so in summary i would say repetition for understanding practicing or applying is definitely meaningful but repetition just for memorizing is not meaningful i hope that answers your question uh, saida sumaiya she asks how much repetition a day in a day and at one time how much repetition there's another question which is uh, relevant after how many repetitions the new set of cards should be shown and how many cards in one set okay now the answer to this again is connected probably to some extent with the earlier question so i would say that this is entirely dependent on your and your baby's preferences which by the way may, may be based on the topic so observe baby's reception without testing having said that around 
three repetitions in a day are a good starting point to start at you can reduce them if baby is accepting well now uh, earlier i uh, we did say like 20 to 30 repetitions i would say from 10 to 30 repetitions is a good number hmm? so at one time you may uh, you may want to show about 10 cards of a similar learning type and you can keep adding on more learning types you know with have short breaks between them and in effect any card should be seen by the baby at least 20 times before putting it away for good so that's my answer to this question then the next question is ma'am i have a i have a one year old who is not interested in flash cards books even for pictures as mothers read stories for their kids all she does is staring books and eating flash cards <laughs> oh that's a bit unfortunate i would say so uh, shika uh, you know understand one thing that a uh, one year old is very active and highly mobile at that i'm sure you know that better than me and they always want to do something with their energy always want to you know they are just vibrating with it so don't show flash cards at a time when she is wanting to play or be more active that is the first thing to follow i'm sure you might be doing it but just to put the question in the correct context so that's one thing very important next explain to your child that cards and books you are going to show are not for tearing or eating up <laughs> be very firm about that now they are for reading and they are for looking at and make sure you do exactly that and do not let her respect, disrespect them at any time this is very important your body language is very important in this context so baby will get the idea eventually and soon will follow your ins- instructions you know and they'll get become more receptive to this activity so while you're reading stories also make sure that you are interested in the stories and you are enjoying it only then baby will appreciate it so that goes for both the flash cards and this but most important is there has to be a element of discipline also uh, um, incorporated by the parent the next question is from deepthi ma'am my daughter is not taking interest in numbers what can i do she is interested in show cards only not in the numbers because she is not able to count the numbers okay so deepthi i am assuming that your child is is less than 3 years old uh now quantity and numbers so in my session too i was talking about uh, you know how uh, um, the logic builds up so quantity and numbers are the foundation for logic building so some children may not be interested in it or it may seem like that but my advice to you is to keep doing it with them keep doing it you know religiously every single day now speed it up see if there is a difference in her attitude when you speed it up or bring it down hmm? observe her for some time so if you're ex- now and another thing if you're explaining to her that you know she should count and then relate to the number please please do not do that you you shouldn't do that just show her the card say the number proceed and keep doing it why because we want the child to work out this logic by herself you keep doing this and then one day i am sure she will surprise you my daughter when she was little i too used to you know feel that she she is not paying attention to the cards that i'm showing her especially when it came to numbers and equations but i somehow felt no i must keep doing them and i just continued to do them and then one day i said um, no i'm going to stop she she doesn't seem to be interested so i stopped and you will be surprised she just dropped everything whatever she was doing and she looked at me saying oh what happened that's when it hit me oh okay she is actually doing it i i haven't realized it so uh, so every child is unique and you know the be- the mother knows the best so do what you believe in and the child will start believing in it too that's my uh, answer to your question has there been any sampling research done like kids with flash cards versus kids without them well Yes there are quite a few research that has been done just as to cite a small example it was a research which was uh, published in the Atlantis press so this one says that you know it's the ability to read early can improve by implementing interesting eye catching media hmm? this was mentioned by uh, both Deveris and Bus in 2010 
Cornell in uh, 2000, uh, 2009, uh, they they say that flashcards is one of the learning media that can be used to improve the initial reading skills. So you can read that article, and I'm sure there's there's much more research, but I just thought I would uh, um, share this one with you. Uh, the next question is from Swati Gaur. Why don't you provide hard copy or provision to take print out of flashcards? It would be a choice uh, for parents in which format they want. Okay, great, Swati. That's a great suggestion. We will work on this for sure. So with that, I think that was the last question. I hope I have not left any questions unanswered. Um, and if there are any questions, please feel free to you know send these questions out to our customer support. Anupama, she wanted to share an interesting take uh, on Babler cards. So yeah, I think hi, Anupama, I think I to go ahead. Hi, hi. So quickly, so this, these Babler show cards, they are very convenient to use. Mm-hmm. And um, I realized that I have increased my knowledge, my own knowledge, considerably. Ah. So much so that um, in the types of cats, for example, there was a Bombay cat, black in color, and we used to see that regularly in our building. So after doing the flash cards, I started pointing that out to my children. Let's see, that's a Bombay cat, and they also <laughs> recognized it because they had seen it in the flash cards. Right. Same with dogs, same with sports. So it just so happens that I I have realized that it's so much easier to. show them things like if they see uh, kids playing badminton they can correlate yeah they have seen it in the flash card and now they are seeing it in real life so yeah. that correlation really helps them to grasp yeah. it faster and they feel that they know something about it excellent great that's wonderful i mean i'm so happy you shared this with us anubhava in fact when we were developing this some of our colleagues you know in fact two, two of our colleagues one of them said uh, he said ki ma'am i wish this thing was uh, known to me before you know i would have been uh, more intelligent maybe he was a very humble person when he said that he said i would have been doing something uh, very much different then that was one and there was another lady who said like uh, while i was reading these uh, info bites there's so much that i learned about it uh, which i didn't know and uh, now when i talk to my friends they say oh wow you definitely need to be on my uh, <laughs> quiz team you know yeah so it's increasing our knowledge as well yeah yeah i'm loving it and so oh. are my kids <laughs> fantastic that's that's, that's wonderful anupama thank you so much for that share so like no need for additional testing so whenever you see it <laughs> uh see any of those objects or anything that you have encountered the flashcards just point it out to them i mean chances Absolutely. are the child will recognize it by themselves and even if not it it will trigger that recall so yes, i think that's a win win for everyone yeah, do we have uh, that that is i just yeah oh, just okay. a minute, one minute uh, i also wanted to share my experience i just cannot uh, control sure. myself sure, so my, sure. my, my baby girl is of 3 and a half months old and we took the babler pack uh, before she was born mm-hmm. and i oh. used that mobile show while i used to show her and yeah she used to do those eye movements but uh, okay she was only looking at it mm-hmm. and once suddenly i recognized while i was cooking in the kitchen i put that mobile show while in that uh, in my pram and i keep the pram in the kitchen while cooking mm-hmm. so i um, i realized that she started shouting literally shouting my 3 year uh, 3 month old baby uh-huh. and i was amazed and she was amazed with the, those patterns on it and oh. i was so happy i shared it with my husband and my with my father and to the people who were saying ki are abhi se itna invest karne ki kya zarurat hai oh that's great that's great so those are uh, you know infant uh, stimulation which we have created infant over stimulation over cards yeah exactly great, great. that voice her voice was so soothing Like that she's enjoying something, you know. Yeah. There are many people who say, "Arey, one month's ki bachche ko kya hi samjega, two months ke bachche ko kya hi samjega." And when you keep, just keep in their uh, like, you know, proximity, and the key now, uh, even that uh, j- that uh, uh, accordion, that flashcard yes, accordion yes. is there, accordion right? Book. Yeah, yeah, accordion, accordion book. Yeah, accordion book. That also now she is recognizing it. Oh, she keeps fantastic. scratching in her cot bed. <laughs> and oh, that's really nice. wonderful <laughs> very nice great we love this i think this nothing share. could be more thrilling for us than to hear you know straight from parents yeah. thank you thank you so much saida or yeah. i 
yes. get uh, i just want to tell uh, the parents one thing uh, abhinav's voice is the voice of bevla that you have been hearing all the time so many of our parents have been saying you know okay so now my child says it in that accent so that <laughs> that accent is abhinav's accent <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah great. Little trivia. So happy to be of service any way I can. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you every one of you for joining in today. Uh I hope you learned a little something, took away a little something from this session and uh yeah, it was every bit as enjoyable and thrilling for us. Yeah. And thank you Vidyut. Oh, don't thank me. Good. It is great. It's always my pleasure and it's so nice to have these parents uh, interact with uh, us, you know. And it's yeah. very fulfilling for me. For all of us. Yes. Yeah, all of us of course. Right. Thanks. Thank you all. Have a thank you. good evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye all.